Okay, so I'm going to try to do this in one take, which means I'm definitely going to screw it up. But this is going to be a lesson in ploidy, and ploidy has to do with genomes. Basically, how many you have, and um, it helps to describe them. And it's a little bit formula formulaic. So um, we have ploidy numbers, and I know you don't know what this means, but we've had lots of conversations about how many genomes you have. So you have a complete, basically, human genome from your mother, um, and you sort of have a complete human genome from your father. We know we have that little Y piece on the end, which is kind of incomplete. You definitely need that X piece from the mom to make a human. Um, but we have two genomes. So that means, uh, mathematically speaking, like when we write this out, we don't write out the term two genomes every time. So we write uh, that we are 2n. Okay? Um, the 2 kind of describes the number of sets of genomes we have, and the n describes another number. So the n describes how many chromosomes we have per genome. So for example, our n number is uh, 23. And as a quick refresher, if you remember that the genome is the entire um, one complete set of DNA, uh, it is not one double strand as I've pictured here. It's actually broken up into the little pieces. Uh, in humans, it's broken up into 23 different pieces. Um, those are called 1 through 22, and the last one is either called X if you are a female and Y for the male um, genome. But, um, yeah, so for humans, the N number is 23. Uh, most of our cells are 2N, which means uh, my hand cells, my brain cells, my legs, uh, everything has, almost everything has two genomes in it. There's a few exceptions, as there always are in biology. For example, my muscles, um, my muscles being particularly large, uh, are polyploid. Actually, everybody's muscles are polyploid, which means that they actually have more than two genomes in them. Um, there are many organisms that have different numbers of genomes. For example, I think that the tardigrade, the uh, water bear, um, has three genomes, I'm pretty sure. Um, so that's 3N. Uh, salmon are 4N. I'm just pulling these numbers out of my uh, head. And each organism has a different N number. So for example, our N number is 23. A different organism might have a N number of 2 or 6 or 8, um, whatever it may be. Um, this becomes really, really important in a couple situations. Uh, when we're talking about cell division, it's important to know how many N you start with and how many N you end with. So when we're talking about growth and repair, so as I grow from one cell into a full human being, um, I'm going to generate clones, which means I'm going to start with a 2N cell and I'm going to end with 2N cells. Now there are some uh, differences, there are exceptions, and this is specifically in the egg and sperm. In those cases, I'm going to end start with a 2N and I'm going to end with a 1N. How that happens is a process called meiotic cell division, um, basically where you will take a 2N, you will double it, make it 2 times 2N, and then you will divide that cell in four ways to make it 1N, 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 and 1N. Um, and it, interestingly, that 1N genome is not going to be from either your mother or your father. It's going to be a combination of those two. I'll explain that more when we talk about meiosis, but that's ploidy.